Hi everyone, how are you all doing? I spent a few days in Cantu and I've decided to come back to the lovely coastal city of Da Nang. Da Nang is where I spent most of my time in Vietnam before the pandemic and I was very keen to get back to see the beach, some familiar faces and tuck into some banh mi and coconut coffee. Aside from about 10 minutes of turbulence, the flight was pretty smooth and it didn't take me long to get to the airport to my place here, which I'll give you a tour of right now. Hello everyone, welcome to this little Airbnb tour of my place that I booked out for about $550 a month. So you can get a place like that, like this for that price. Uh, maybe it'd be a bit more closer to the beach and probably prices will go up as more tourists come in. So uh, yeah, come here quick. Um, but prices tend to hover around that price for something like this, um, which is yeah, really good. You get the monthly discount and um, yeah, enough room for a big comfy bed. A um, bit of greenery outside and balcony where I hang my clothes when they come out of the washing machine. Even got remote controlled curtains, air conditioner, smart TV, workstation, electric stove, fridge and freezer, a cupboard, plenty of clothes space and in the bathroom, a nice big shower, plenty of room for toiletries and even a remote controlled toilet, um, which is, yeah, maybe a little bit different, but uh, Nice touch. So yeah, you can get something like this for pretty cheap. And uh, I think you might come and see for yourself why Da Nang is uh, such a great holiday destination and makes Vietnam a great place for tourists. So get in quick. Now let's get back to it. The first thing I did when I arrived back in Vietnam <laughs> was head to one of the local expat bars, Dirty Fingers where I was able to snag a photo with a friend of a friend who plays in the band The Faux Fighters. My mate who knows him, Tim, actually plays some acoustic sets in country Victoria for anyone who's interested. So Da Nang is a great city. It's got a beautiful beach and it's often filled with morning joggers, people playing football or volleyball or people just roasting in the sun. It's great to be back and be reminded of the charm of the city the leafy green streets, the lights of all the cafes and bars and restaurants on just about every corner, uh, the smiling faces of tourists and the local people who are excited to welcome them back. I'll bring you some more photos and videos over the next coming weeks so you can hopefully get a sense of the more notable characteristics of the city. The main downside is that a lot of the businesses have been hit really hard by the lockdowns so they're not in operation anymore. They've been replaced or demolished or they're slowly being swallowed by weeds and grass until the next developers decide to come along and clear them away and start construction. So there's a lot of banging and hammering and drilling going on. So that's one thing worth considering if you're planning on having a holiday here or especially if you're working online, you might wanna ask the hotel or Airbnb host, is there any heavy construction work going on on their block? Speaking of businesses, I know that some of you are studying business and I thought you might find it useful to hear some common phrasal verbs which are used in daily life but also in a business or workplace context or in the classroom. I'll mention five of them with example sentences and I'll include five more in an unlisted YouTube video for those of you who subscribe to the GMH English channel on YouTube and just emailed me the word business to contact at gmhenglish.com. Okay, let's get started. Cut back. To cut back on something means to lessen the workload or the quantity of something in order to meet certain demands. Even if it's something like demand for sleep, you might say something like, I need to cut back on working weekends because it's causing too much stress and not giving me the time I need to relax. We need to cut back on training programs and invest more on our recruitment strategy. Deal with. Your ability to deal with something or someone refers to your ability to be creative or resilient or use any positive attribute in order to get through a difficult situation. We need to deal with the negative effects of COVID if we want to maintain our good relationship with our supplier.
branch out. Just as a new branch emerges from an existing branch on a tree, branching out in a business sense means exploring new directions as a way to expand your business and see new opportunities for growth. The firm decided to branch out into other areas of the law profession in an effort to bring in new clients and enhance its reputation. Take off. If something takes off, it's seen as potentially successful and is gathering momentum as a result. After some disruptions in the early part of the year, the tourism sector is finally taking off. Run out of. You can literally run out of a place, meaning to leave that place by running. But in another way, it's a phrasal verb that tells the listener that someone or something no longer has something that was being used before. The physical or abstract thing that's required is no longer available because its limit has been exhausted. We might have to stop sending out invitations to the office party because the venue is already filled with tables and chairs and we're running out of space. Meaning if we invite more people, the venue might not have enough space to hold the party. There you have it, five common phrasal verbs that can be used in a business setting. And you can hear me explain five more by subscribing to GMH English and then emailing the word business to contact at gmhenglish.com. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you can use those phrasal verbs and you picked up some useful vocabulary that you can use in your daily life or in the workplace. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.